Mike Van Deren with Vectors Inc. Doing another Vectors EDU uh, tech tip kind of thing here. Uh, got a couple calls this week from customers needing to uh, kind of recall how do I do a here key position. And uh, other questions asked was how do I ensure that my receiver is actually logging static data before I walk away from it to go shoot a bunch of points in uh, with RTK. And then finally, uh, how do I get that static file out of the receiver and then brought back into the data collector. So I'm going to go ahead and run you guys through this here. So I'm going to do hamburger button, measure. I've got a survey style here, RTK internal, uh, meaning internal transmit and logging. If you guys uh, need help creating the survey style, take a look down below uh, or on our channel. I did do a video on how to create a bunch of different survey styles. I kind of walk you through that. So this is the only static survey style I have uh, in here at the moment. And I'm going to go ahead and hit start base receiver. All right, so as always with the base, have to give it a point number here. And because I don't have a coordinate on this already, I'm going to have to hit this arrow that points to the right. And I'm going to go to key in. So here I've got question marks for lat, long, and height. So one thing worth mentioning here, uh, this project, uh, for example, is set up uh, coordinate system-wise, no projection, no datum. Um, so if I hit a here key on this, it will fill out lat, long, height, and you'll notice I don't have a computed grid in here. Um, this here key can be done global or, let's see if I can escape out and show this to you guys a different way here. Oops. By default, this is set to grid. So most of you guys, when you go, if your project is set up in no projection, no datum, and uh, you type in your point number, and then you uh, hit the arrow to the right and select key in, this is probably what your screen is going to look like. If you try hitting a here key on this, it's not going to allow you. So it's basically saying, hey, you're set up in no projection, no datum. There is no northing easting associated with that. So what you guys will need to do is hit options, change this from grid to global. For some of you guys, depending on which version of Trimble Access, it might say WGS84 here. So when you hit the here key, you only need to hit it once. If you hit it multiple times, it doesn't make your autonomous position more precise. Um, you only need to hit the button once. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'm going to go ahead and hit store here. Ten of height I'm going to pop in. Got my station index, measure to bottom of quick release, which I need to change to lever of R10 extension. This all looks good here. I am getting a S bass. Corrections, that'll make me a little bit tighter. And I've got base started. So at this point, you guys would then be uh, hitting hamburger button, measure, measure points, and you guys can go and uh, start collecting your RTK data. Uh, anytime I'm doing a static application out in the field, before I leave the base, I uh, tend to be picky, and I really want to make sure that that file is actually logging uh, or is currently logging data. So I can show you how to check that before you leave, uh, leave the base setup. If you go up here and you click on your receiver icon, and you go down to Import Files, here's what you're going to notice. There's going to be a static file with a lock icon next to it. To me, that is proof that the receiver is currently logging a static session, and the lock icon's there because it's ongoing you can't import that file till it's finished. So uh, looking at these, uh, the other question we get asked a lot is, well, how do I tell which static file I need to bring in? So the first four digits here are going to be the last four numbers of the serial number on, the, on that particular receiver, followed by the next three numbers, which is going to be the Julian day. So currently we're Julian day 163, 163. And last number here is going to be your session number. So I did this intentionally this morning. Uh, this one ending in zero, that was the first static session I ran today. 
Here's technically the second static session, third static session, and this would be the fourth static session. So wanted to show you guys the lock icon. It's important uh, to know basically what that means. I do this every time I do any form of static. I like seeing that it's actually logging my file. So at this point, you guys would then, uh, as I said, hamburger button, measure, you'd pick your same survey style again, and then measure points. I don't have a rover out in front of me here at the moment. Uh, you'd connect to that via radio, UHF, go out, collect all your data, and then let's assume you just finished your survey for the day. You'd go right back in here, and you would hit End Survey. And when you hit End Survey, we're talking about the rover. It'll ask you, do you want to power down? You can hit Yes. And then you're going to jump in the truck or walk back to the base. As soon as you get within Bluetooth range of the base, you're going to do the exact same procedure. Hamburger button measure, select the survey style we started the base with, and then you're going to come down and we're going to hit end GNSS base survey. You are going to be prompted to, uh, if you want to power down the receiver or not, you're going to hit no. And I showed you guys this before, if we go right back in here, we're Bluetooth to the base at the moment, and I'm going to go to import files. Notice this is now a .to4, and I no longer have the lock icon here. So if this is my two-hour, three-hour session, um, you then check this. You can bring import multiple files. I'm just going to pull in the one here. And it's that easy. So the beauty of ending your survey at the rover then when you come back and you end it at the base, if you import it at that point in time, that static file, it's associated with your job that's open that you just finished. Um, and so if you were to do a, let me show this to you here, hamburger button, here's the job here, copy. You have your job selected and you hit copy. We're going to copy job files to if you were to plug in a thumb drive into your uh, Windows 10 device, you would then navigate to it here. And here you can you have some different options. If you want to copy, uh, you had some uh, background map, feature code library, road files, media files, linked files. You, you can guys can kind of play with this. Once you import, uh, I'm sorry, copy uh, this job over to your thumb drive, it will also pull that static file over with it which then makes things real easy back in the office. Uh, if you just pull in the job file into TBC, it will also pull in the static file that's associated with it. Hope this helps. Uh, we're going to continue to try to do more videos for you guys as we get more questions. Um, if there's something you guys want to see in particular, please uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, have a fantastic day, and we will see you next time.